Hello everybody, welcome back to the cabin. Welcome back to Commonwealth Flipper. We're gonna do a video today, it's a little bit different. We're gonna do one of our top 10 videos about a topic that I'm really passionate about, which is VHS. And there's a lot of scams out there. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of fake information out there. We're gonna talk about that as well, but it is a passion of mine and I wanna go through the most valuable VHS and maybe even give you some tips on how you can look for things when you're out there at garages, when you're out there at thrift stores, when you're out there at flea markets, where you might be able to find a gym, so much so that it might even change your economic life. Let's get to it. And if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you know I always bring in somebody who knows far more than me. I'm a kind of a jack of all trades, a master of none, and I'm pretty good at picking out, you know, smalls and different things that are worth a little bit of money, but I bring in the big guns to talk about the big money. And it's such a nice day outside, we're gonna keep the door open. So if you hear some birds or my dogs or my wife or my daughter out there, we're gonna bring in Rod here, picking and punching. He is absolutely one of the best pickers out there for vhs and he really knows what he's talking about and he's going to help us out today all right y'all here is rod from picking and punching i love that shirt by the way <laughs> that thing is killer what's up everyone you know before we get started here today we need to address the 800 pound grill in this room because when we're talking about vhs you're going to hear all kind of things about scams <laughs> they're worthless why are people mm -hmm. doing this it's money laundering we're going to address those right now okay and so you're going to tell us why this right here isn't worth fifty thousand dollars yeah, $50, yeah. Well, you sure? I mean, I bought this. I, this is my retirement plan. You know, it's not even sealed though. So, so yeah. So unfortunately, <laughs> if you guys go on eBay, you're gonna see a lot of black diamond, and they're not buy nows. They're all set for auction. Mm -hmm. People run those up because unfortunately, on eBay, you can bid on items mm -hmm. and not pay. You got it. And I will say this, and this is a video for another day, so I don't want to interrupt what we got going on here today. But I have found some Disney Black Diamond that are actually worth real money, and it's not the kind you find out there all the time. They are very hard to find, very rare, different type of items. But I'm going to do that video. There might be four or five that actually have some value, and two or three that have significant value, but nothing like we're going to talk about today. Yeah, and I mean, just to scratch the surface, I mean, the early VHS for Disney, there's a couple there that are worth some mm -hmm. money, the clamshell ones. There's some TV show ones that do have some money. Mm -hmm. There's some promo ones yeah. or screener copies that are worth some money. You got it. So we're going to go through like the top 10. A lot of them are going to be similar titles and Rod's going to walk us through it. And then we're going to talk about a few different topics today. We're going to have a different video coming out probably on the Garage Sale Nation channel. Haven't decided yet. We're going to talk about grading because all of the videos we're going to talk about today have been graded and have gone for big, big money. And that's what we're gonna talk about today, but this video is not gonna be about the grading process per se. Correct. And you know, when you are dealing with the grading, you have to realize that when you get a high grade on one of these items, it pushes the rarity to the next level. Exactly. And that's why these are gonna go for big money. Okay, all right, let's start with number 10. So number 10 is Jaws 1983. It was actually sold on Heritage Auction House and it sold for $32,500. <laughs> you know, about how long ago was that? So that actually sold back in June 9th of 2022. 2022. Yeah. So there's another topic about dates and, and the market because it's not a steady market. And I want to talk about that a little later in the video. But you said IGS, and we're not going to get into grading in a little bit. But the company, obviously you can see there, this one is quite a bit different than these right here. Yeah. The grading company was IGS for that. So right. does that play a role in this at all? Yeah, so there's three different grading companies out there. You're going to have IGS that grades the box and the seal. You're going to have Beckett, which used to be BHS DNA, grades mm -hmm. the box and the seal. And they have VGA, which grades the box and the seal as one grade. Okay, and I think we don't have any VGA with us today, I don't think. But we do have IGS and we do have Beckett. Rod, before we get to number nine, you said one other thing. You said it was a grade of an 8.5 and it went for 32000 Obviously, 10 being the best, right? So it sold for $32,500 at a grade of 8.5. So hypothetically, we're talking about maybe more money if you could find one out there that, that will get a higher grade. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of people care about the box. IJ grades the box and the seal separately. Okay. So this yeah. one got an 8.5 in the box and 8.5 in the seal. Just to answer your question here, you can actually add tens of thousands of dollars by bumping it up to a 9, 9.5. Wow. The reason for that is the rarity of it. You mm -hmm. may only have one at a 9.5, mm -hmm where you have 10 at an 8.5. Right. So that's if somebody why. opened a box of those that were just 10s, the value would probably go down, but those would, the value of that one would yeah. go down because there's so many more above it. So I always like to use the analogy, think of Michael Jordan. There's 
thousands of his rookie cards out mm -hmm. there, tens of thousands, mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands. Mm -hmm. But if you have a Michael Jordan rookie card at 10.0, mm -hmm. there's only a couple hundred of those in the world. And that's why those sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars. All right, number nine. What do you got for number nine? So number nine was actually sold in February of 2023. It was a Star Wars original VHS, and it was actually graded by VGA. It mm -hmm. came out in 85 plus, which is what they consider almost near mint. Okay, wow. Okay, and it went for thirty-two thousand five hundred. Five hundred dollars. So very so similar to the Jaws one much. there. So, but okay. yeah. And we're gonna see a few Star Wars throughout this, right? So one thing you gotta think about when it comes to the grading is that big pop culture movies is what people want. Okay. You know, that's why Mario is so popular in video games or Zelda because okay. it's what people grew up on. Now, as we're doing this, I want everybody to know because we throw up eBay comps all the time. These are not going to be eBay comps we're talking about today. These are auction houses dealing in the highest. And a lot of times what happens is people find them in the field. They'll auction them off on eBay. Then they get graded. Then they get sent to the auction companies and they're going for even higher dollars. So re the main reason we're going to use a couple different auction houses. We're going to use Heritage Auction House, Golden Auction House, and Comics Connect. And the reason for that is they actually vet their buyers. So you have to be approved to bid over like $10,000 on these websites. Also too, a lot of the eBay comps, we can't verify if they are real or not. Mm -hmm. So this is a good way for us to get legit sales mm -hmm. from one of the biggest companies in the country. You got it. All right, y'all, two down. We're going to go eight more to go, and then we're going to talk about some runners-up, and those runners-up are still life-changing money here. What do you got for number eight? So number eight is one of my favorite movies of all time, Terminator. Mm -hmm. It actually sold in Comic Connect back in February of 2022, so for 32500 Okay, jeez. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, what do you got in number seven? So number seven actually sold in Golden Auction House back in February 2022. It was the first print of Star Wars. It was an IGS, and it sold for $34,200. <laughs> that just blows my mind. So let's talk about dates a little bit here. Yeah. So I, I found a, a few movies uh, not too long ago. I guess it's been about a year and a half ago, two years ago at this point, mm -hmm. and I was pleasantly surprised. The market has fluctuated up and down. And like any high-end collectible, the market sometimes is determined by the economic forces around it as well. So how do you see this, you know, when we're talking about these numbers, just because something's worth this today doesn't mean it's worth that tomorrow. Long-term, where do you see the market going? You see it going up, going down. Where are we at in the early stages of, of collecting? So with the VHS, we're still in the, we're in the baby stages mm -hmm. of VHS. I mean, this is something that came to the forefront within the last few years. Mm -hmm. One disclaimer on this list is some of these VHS that we're seeing on this list now may not be worth what they sold for back then, mm -hmm. what they are now, because people are finding other copies. People mm -hmm. are finding other seal ones, different variations. One might come out a couple months prior to the other one. Different yeah. watermarks on them. These are things you need to take factor into consideration. I'm just going to piggyback on, on top of that and just say, you know, I'm a hunter. We hunt for this stuff. And so if there's only, say, six copies of something out there now, six years from now, there might be 50 out there because now there's value and people are starting to find them and starting to look for them. Where 10 years ago, we weren't looking for these things. Too. Were you looking for them 10 years ago? I wasn't. I wasn't. It's probably only been the last two and a half years that I've started looking and they are out there and you can still find them and most people still don't know that they have value. It's not like records where somebody co comes across, you know, a mint copy of, you know, I don't know, give me a, a any record out there that's worth a crazy amount of money. People realize that some records are worth a lot of money, but there's still a large part of the population who just don't know that VHS are, are worth money. And we're going to give you an example of that right here. So the ad what Kevin saying there is, these are actually found in a factory sealed case in a warehouse. That's why these are in such good conditions. Mm -hmm. I actually set one personally off to be graded. Mm -hmm. And as you see, came back with an 8.0 because the corner was nicked, but the seal was almost a perfect 10. Mm -hmm. That's very rare for a movie that came out in the 1980s. And the reason for that is these things, no one wanted them for years. They yeah. sat around in warehouses and boxes. <laughs> you couldn't give them away. Mm -hmm. Now everyone wants them. Mm -hmm. So they find a factory sealed case in place. So it opens up, now the market, you have a bunch in the market, mm -hmm. and that can actually fluctuate the price as well. Mm -hmm. So you just never know. Very cool. Well, I'm glad to have those. Yeah. Hmm. All right, y'all, number six on the list. So horror movies are huge with VHS, and The Thing is number six on this list. So for over $37,000 uh, back in 2022, it was an IGS VHS. I think it was an 8.0 box, a 7.5 seal from 1982. Super hard to find. Not many out there. In 1982, and that brings up a topic that we're going to talk about in a minute, which I haven't even told you about yet, which is kind of the golden era. And one of the hallmarks of being able to find some VHS 
if you're looking at things and dating things, as it gets closer to DVD age, they're more mass produced and something like that. There probably wasn't that many of them out there. Well, I mean, it's a popular movie, so there's a lot of thing movies out there. But mm -hmm. coming from 1982, you have to remember back then, VHS was $79.99 yeah. per tape. Mm -hmm. You know, you're paying $500 to $1,000 just for a VC, mm -hmm. VCR player. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people could not afford those. So when you could afford them, you're actually popping those in and watching those. Yep. And for all you young folks out there, there was actually a war between VHS and Beta back in the day. And only one of them was going to win. You know, these players were really expensive. And so you had to kind of make up your mind. Are you going this direction or this direction? VHS won the day. But in some ways, that makes some of the beta tapes pretty collectible. And the next one is a beta, number five. Yeah, so speaking about beta, this is actually the highest selling beta tape of all time. It's actually Superman 1980. It sold for $40,000 on Heritage Auction House. It was a VGA, I think it was like a, I think it was a VGA 80 on that one, but super rare. It's so hard to find beta anywhere, even loose. I can't find, when I go hunt for VHS, <laughs> I barely ever find beta. Yeah, and that's a topic maybe for another day too. There are a lot of VHS out there worth money that are loose. But Superman is a topic I want to talk about because one thing he really helped me out with in looking for things because you can not you can look out there in the field and find things, but you can do if you're good at it, you know what you're looking for, retail or, or excuse me, online arbitrage and you can find some things online and if you know what's coming out in the future Sometimes it'll help you determine the value because when something hits, it's gonna a, a new movie coming out, for instance, it's gonna help. I'll give you an analogy outside of VHS, then I want you to give us some examples. We've got a couple over here that the value has gone up recently yeah. because of new movies. I remember finding a Cobra CB radio, and I've sold hundreds of different you know CB radios over the years. But this one, when I looked it up, I could not believe the price. This was uh, almost 20 years ago at this point. The Dukes of Hazzard movie was coming out. That was the model they used. The price tripled yeah. in a matter of months. So tell us a little bit about something like Superman, how the value of that might go up, or maybe give some other analogies with other Yeah, videos. so the uh, best analogy is probably the sports world, you know, sports cards. You have mm -hmm. a hot prospect coming out of college. Everyone goes out and buys his cards because mm -hmm. they think he's going to be the next LeBron James, mm -hmm. the next... You know, Emmett Smith, you know, the next Frank Thomas, you know, you go out there. So you're going to go invest in these. A lot of times they don't pan out because the players get hurt. The good thing about like VHS movies or like comic books, you can speculate on things to come down the line because mm -hmm. when they announce they're going to reboot a TV series or mm -hmm. like, for example, like Top Gun came out in the 80s. Yep. Well, they just rebooted that. They did Top Gun. Well, they didn't reboot it, but they yeah, did a, a sequel it, to yeah, it, you know, a sequel to it. pretty and much the so that. The value of that so one went up. The value of that went up. But what you want to look for is... When they do that, then when they put a director on there, they start casting the people. You're going to start seeing, you know, influxes in the market, mm -hmm. ups and downs. And so because... Superman, that's in the works, right? Superman's in the works. So especially Superman is one of the most iconic superheroes of all time. Right. Well, a lot of people know DC has not been able to make a really good movie mm -hmm. for years now. James Gunn has now left Marvel, come to DC, taken over to come to DC Universe. So it might be really good to start investing in a lot of old DC mm -hmm. VHS because you might see a big influx down the line and see those movies start taking off. And I gotta, I'm just looking over here. There's an example right here with Indiana Jones with that movie coming out really soon, right? Videos coming out. I mean, that movie's coming out this summer, the new Indiana mm -hmm. Jones there. So with that coming out, you're going to see yeah. a big, not just VHS, but all the other collectibles as well. Sports card, uh, Indiana cards, comic books, yeah. action figures, mm -hmm. everything across the board. And I'm looking over here, right? Mario. Yeah. Mario, Mario, Super Mario Brothers. That just came out. It was a successful movie as well. And that'll help it. If it was a bomb, maybe it wouldn't help it quite as much. Or is there anything like Ninja Turtles in the works or something like that? You know, if that stuff, you start to see that stuff coming out, you might have yourself a winner. Absolutely. And a lot of people don't know this is a lot of movies and a lot of TV shows actually stem from comic books or graphic yeah. novels. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to start following what's coming out in the comic book world, that does help out when, in, when play when it comes to the VHS movies or just movies in general. All right, y'all. I collect VHS. All of these over there are mine. I think, uh, I don't know, one of these, two of these might be mine. He's got a few here that he's using as Whoa. examples. Two of these are mine. Two right? these... Don't, try to, don't try to steal my <laughs> VHS, all right? I thought that these three were mine, no? <laughs> that oh, these was mine, two are yeah. Here. That's that's I'm mine. thinking I have that one, right? All right, now that we're done fighting over who's VHS or who's, what's number four? Number four is actually one of my favorite movies of childhood. This one right here. The Goonies. The now, Goonies. not this one right here, but, <laughs> all right, well, this is what we're talking about. The Goonies actually sold for $50,000. I 
uh, back in 2022 on Heritage Auction House. Jeez. Very rare, hard to find movie. I mm -hmm. think there's only one or two out there sealed that I even know about. Mm -hmm. So it's now. And I want to make a point here, yeah. real quick. Do we give? And you gave the numbers, right? Fifty thousand dollars. Uh, you say there's one or two out there that you know about, but there's one right here, right? And this is where a lot of people just make a mistake. I've made videos, and we'll talk about Willow here in a minute. Matter of fact, let's talk about it now. I found a sealed copy of Willow, and I made a video about. It. I made two videos about it actually, and I sold it for seventeen hundred. I don't know if it's seventeen hundred or seventeen hundred and fifty dollars. It was a lot of money. I put the video out there on TikTok and put it out on Facebook, and I put it out on. Instagram and people were like, you know, this guy's so full of, you know, whatever. And then they start talking about me on Reddit. But what they, because they go to eBay and they find all these sold copies of Willow and they're like, oh, it's only worth this much. But listen, there are, think about it like trading cards, essentially, where there's a rookie, there's a second copy, a third copy, a fifth copy, some, you know, popular movies like Goonies that's probably got five or six, or six different variants. I don't know. I'm probably guessing, but, you know, yeah. maybe more than that in VHS. And so a different copy, even though there's a minor difference in the actual cover or seal or watermark, that could mean tens of thousands of dollars, maybe even more than that. Well, not more than tens of thousands, but you get the point. All right, we're getting closer to the top. Number three. Number three is a repeat offender. This is Star Wars. This actually sold back in 2021, so it's going to have a higher price on it because the market was higher back then than it is now. And this is a 9.6. It was actually a VHS DNA who graded it, who is now Beckett. So Beckett Sports Cards actually bought out that company. Mm -hmm. Now they have Beckett VHS. What was the grade on it, you It was a 9.6. So very close to almost a perfect grade on the box. The seal, I think, got a grade of eight, a grade of A. They grade the seal on the box yeah. separately. What did it go for? $57,600. Oh and it was 2021. So bringing back that point just a little bit here. 2021, you know, when this market starts to come into play, people ask themselves, what would be the most rare, most iconic film? Hard to get more iconic than Star Wars. So that was 2021, and that's the earliest stages of, well, I guess it's the earliest stages, right? That's about when this really started to ramp up, 2020, 2021. Yeah. The value was going, you know, speculative. It was going pretty darn high. But if you remember back, tell us about 2021. Well, well 2020, 2021, what mm -hmm. was going on in the world? You know, we had yeah. the pandemic going mm -hmm. on. Everyone was stuck at home. Mm -hmm. Collectibles went through the roof mm -hmm. across the board. Yep. Sports cards, comic books, mm -hmm. you know, anything, v, uh, video games, VHS, anything graded, prices were higher back in 2021 than they ever had been. All right, this one is number two on the list, and it's not something you're going to find out there, let's be honest, because there's a little bit of a special twist to this one. All right, Rod, what's number two? So number two is actually a special, special tape. It's Back to the Future. It's a first release, but if you guys remember Biff, who was a bully on Back to the Future, is actually a copy of, that was sent to him from the studio. It was the first release. So it was probably sent to him before they actually even sold it on the market. Mm -hmm. During the sale, they actually included a letter that he wrote to yeah. kind of verify it a little bit and it boosted the value of the tape. What was the summary of that? Of that so letter? pretty much he said, this is came to me from the studio. He goes, I saved it forever because I knew VHS was gonna be very valuable. Yeah. <laughs> and now I can't find a VCR to watch it. So, and to go through the price, this thing actually sold for $75,000. Yeah. Now don't be confused. A lot of the VHS Back to the Futures actually usually sell between like 10 and $15,000, mm -hmm. like first prints. Just, you know, put petty cash. Yeah, petty cash. Yeah. but. <laughs> this one took a premium because it came from one of the actors. Yeah. It was his personal copy. Well, so. he must have been hard up for money. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe so. That's a lot of money. I might do the same thing. <laughs> Seventy five thousand dollars. Why not? All right, we're finally there. Number one on the list. Number one is probably one of the biggest franchises of all time. Star Wars. It was sold in two thousand twenty three in Golden Auction House. It sold for one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars. <laughs> I mean, that is pretty much. Twenty to thirty thousand dollars over anything else in this list. Mm -hmm. Double the other Star Wars movies mm -hmm. on there. Now, one thing I would like to say it was this was the first commercial release. It was an eight point oh. It was actually graded by Beckett, mm -hmm. but I could not verify that this was a legit sale. So I just put a little asterisk okay. there, just so you guys know. But I have it's sold in the Golden Auction House which is a legit auction house. I don't have any doubts in my mind that it wasn't a real sale. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't verify it. So right. just let you know. Okay. So you've mentioned Star Wars a couple different times. Yes. Can you tell us maybe a little bit about the difference in these and why some are going for this and some are going for that? There's multiple releases of all these Star Wars. Right. Some have mm -hmm. what they call like the draw box where the box draws out from the side. Mm -hmm. Some are going to be big box. Some are going to be smaller box. So it just really comes down to the seals, the version of it. 
you know, like you said earlier, with different sports cards or different baseball players, you have first year, second year, 10th year. So there's going to be different releases throughout time. Got it. There are some more out there you should be on the lookout for. These are our runners up in the list from 20 to, say, number 11. However, we're going to exclude all the Star Wars ones in there. But Top Gun... An absolutely great one. I have a couple copies over there, but I don't have the first run. And that one sold for $17,500. Another one to keep an eye out for. Well, earlier we actually talked about Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Terminator. One of the other big action heroes mm -hmm. out there, Sylvester Stallone. And how can you leave Rambo off this list? Okay, <laughs> Rambo actually sold for $22,500. Rod, give us one more in our runners-up list. Yeah, so horror movies are always going to be huge. Return of Living Dead actually sold for almost $19,000. So that's one to look out for, especially first print. And speaking of horror movies out there, I've sold a lot of horror movies over the years, and it's harder to find them sealed, unless they're more mainstream. Like I sold a Friday the 13th, Jason Takes Manhattan. I think I got around $800 for that one sealed. It was not graded. But it's harder to find those more obscure titles because people who follow horror movies and they watch horror movies, they watch them, they take them out, they don't collect them, they don't sit and get dust. Those people really enjoy them and they watch them and they watch them and they watch them. All right, another horror movie out there. We just got done talking about Friday the 13th. This is Halloween, Michael Myers with Jamie Lee Curtis. This one sold for $22,500. All right, a lot of resellers out there also talk constantly about the movie cars disney pixar cars and it does have significant value and the reason it has significant value is because it was well there's a few reasons it is the last disney vhs ever produced and it wasn't a retail item it was part of their vhs club and that was dying out because dvd was coming into play at that point and so it was the very last one they produced they didn't produce near as many of them and of course, to get sent out to a limited amount of people, there are some out there, but only a few have come to market. I actually had the opportunity because of that video I did where I found that willow and we found all kinds of sealed VHS. I think we made over $4,000 on that lot that day. It was an absolutely incredible find. But because of that video, somebody reached out to me, James, if you're out there listening, he said he picked this VHS up at a garage sale because he saw me talking about VHS and he bought it for a quarter. And he sent it, sent a picture to me. And he, he had, I think if the story is is correct, there were some health issues in the family and he's like, you know, I gotta sell this thing, whatever. And I offered him $2,500 for it. I talked to all kinds of folks out there trying to get a handle on what it was worth. And I was comfortable offering 2,500. I think at that point, there hadn't been any come to auction on Heritage Auction just yet. And so there wasn't a track record of these. And so nobody could give me a specific number for it. In the end, he decided to list it on eBay and he sold it for $3,750. So that's one where people will point out, hey, this isn't real, this is a scam. I know the person who sold it. It is a real sale, it went through and he got the money for it. So there are VHS out there to be found. We're gonna tell you about a few more of the runners up. I have my suspicions, Rod, because I know what I would have done with that if I bought it for 2,500. I would have got it graded, I would have contacted Heritage Auctions, and I would have sold it. Now they charge fees and everything, but there's a recent sale and I have my suspicions that it's the same VHS that was graded and then sold and it sold on Heritage Auction. What did it sell for? So it could have been, I mean, rumor has it there's only 500 that were produced mm -hmm. or maybe around 500. So those sealed there, there can't be many. Maybe maybe mm -hmm. you kind of want to hand him, you sealed it out there. Mm -hmm. This one actually sold in the beginning of 2023 for almost $9,000. It was graded mm -hmm. by Beck. It was an 8.0. I have heard of one or two other ones that have sold in the past, anywhere from eight to 10 grand, somewhere in that ballpark. Mm -hmm. So it could have been yours. Yeah, and I'll tell you, you know, if you find one out there, my PO box is 1427. <laughs> Bedford, Virginia, 24523. <laughs> so not just sealed, but also if you find it unsealed, pick it up because even yeah, an unsealed yeah. copy of that mm -hmm. sells for thousands of mm -hmm. dollars because it's yep. that Depending rare. on condition, I've seen some in the hundreds and yeah. whatever, you know, you could, if you find it unsealed, go ahead and pick it up. I'll buy it from you. Many of you might remember, I used to have a Ghostbusters sitting right here. It was not a sealed copy. It was unsealed. I bought it from that other lot, but that gentleman who I bought it from, had it unsealed. A lot of the stuff that was sealed in there was because he ran, he owned a VHS store, you know, before the chain VHS stores were out there. And he brought a ton home and he didn't have a chance to watch all of them. And so I got some. Well, I used to have that one up there. Ghostbusters is my one of my absolute favorite movies. And he's going to tell us about that so, one. So 
me as well, I absolutely love Ghostbusters. As a kid, it's one of my favorite movies to always watch. The cartoon was awesome. But this movie is iconic. It's probably the reason why it almost brought almost $24,000 at auction. Yeah, and I want to just stress something. And I hopefully you've got this for me talking before and us talking in this video. That doesn't mean any copy and every copy. We've kind of hopefully talked about that a little bit. But I'm going to give you an example. You know, there are tons of copies of Ghostbusters out there. Uh, many different incarnations of covers. But we're talking about the very first release that would go for something that much. And they used to have releases that would go to video stores versus retail and things like that and so this is something that is one of the most mass-produced movies you can imagine but tiny little differences will tell the story if you ever find a black back cover it's going to be more rare of course than the one that's kind of beige -ish. and so don't look at this and watch this video and say oh i found this and whatever and then get disappointed or don't be the person out there who lists your video for twenty thousand dollars without doing your homework when it's really an eight dollar video there's could be very little difference. You'll notice all these are the rarer copies because you can find those other ones everywhere. You can actually find a lot of these everywhere, yeah. but you can't necessarily find them sealed with all the watermarks and things and that go with it. And the piggyback off that too, you, you have watermarks on the sides. Some are gonna have watermarks on the back. Some are gonna have stuff on the bottom here. Mm -hmm. These little changes, UPC codes, you need to do your research to find out little where things are. Little things like these right yes. here, the seals on the inside of the seals. So these things can actually really dictate which version it is, when it was released, what year it was released, because some may have blue watermarks, some may have white watermarks. So you just have to do your research, go on eBay, look at so comps, take a look at the copies that are graded, see, just to help educate yourself in this. Mm -hmm. Reach out to other people in the community. Yep. You know, we're, I'm, I'm gonna stress that. And because I, I know it's not just you, Rod, but there's four or five people that if I need to contact them, yeah. you're the first guy I contact. But even you don't know everything. There's so much out there. And so do your homework before you assume anything about, you know, just don't look on and look at sold comps, you know, kind of look at the highest price ones and start to really, and not even just look at one of them, but go through and see what are the earmarks of this particular VHS. And some people will list them up there and they're not valuable at all. Yeah. You have to do your research, check out all the major auction houses, um, check out eBay comps. I mean, me and you still, to this day, are still doing our research every yep. time we find a steel one because mm -hmm. we don't know everything here in this. Mm -hmm. And that's a full disclaimer of this video here. We're here to help educate you guys, but we're still learning along the way. Kind of piggybacking on that, I just asked Rod if he was willing for me to share his Instagram out there. You know, if you want to send him a message, you know, he gets a lot of messages. You might not be able to get to every one, but I'm sure if you, if you click a picture of what you've got and it looks interesting to him, he'll probably get back to you. He's also done some unboxings on picking and punching. I have an order from IGS coming in. Unfortunately, it's not coming in for two more days, but we'll do an unboxing here and talk about that a little bit. But he's gonna give us one more title to look for. So probably one of the most iconic sports movies of all time is Rocky. Rocky Balboa, this one sold for almost $28,000. There's a bunch of versions out there, so make sure you do your research, but it is a very iconic, with a very iconic actor, Sylvester Stallone. A lot of you might be new to watching my channel, either Commonwealth Picker, Commonwealth Flipper, or Garage Sale Nation, where we might have another video coming out about VHS. Go over there and check that one out. But I have never collected hardly anything. When I was a kid, I collected some stuff. But in my adulthood, I never made a whole ton of money, so I just couldn't seem to justify collecting a lot. But I have really got into collecting VHS. I absolutely love it. People send me VHS all the time. I'm very appreciative. And it's not always those high dollar items that, that I just love to have. I'm going to give you an example. I got this Iron Eagle sealed. It is, you know, it's not Top Gun, but I absolutely loved this movie. And so I've decided I'm going to make a room. The eBay cave in there is going to be dedicated to the two things that I, I think if I had to collect anything, it would be sealed VHS, sealed cassette tapes, and maybe some wrestling figures. And we're going to dedicate a whole room to that. And I'm excited about that. I went out there. I got this one personally great. Okay. I love this VHS so much and I know how much you love wrestling. So I went out, I gave you the hookup and you were able to get these. Yes. Okay. For your personal collection. Yes. Now, the and biggest this one, but hopefully my brother's not watching. <laughs> one of them is going to my brother. And so I'm excited about that. So when you are collecting stuff, the best thing is to pair things together. Mm -hmm. So I brought you a gift today. <laughs> this is going to kick off your VHS and kick off your wrestling collection. All right. You're making me nervous. I'm feeling bad. You want to hold the camera? I'll hold the camera here. Okay. I'm going to let you open this up. <laughs> Look, now that you can see my more of my VHS shirt. Uh, let me just add one thing really quick. When I talk about this, this is, it's every generation, right? 
you know, that logo to me meant a lot. We used to, we used to rent a VCR because they were so expensive. My family didn't have much money and it was super exciting when we got to go to the VHS store in Yucaipa, California. If anybody's from that, you remember that it was right next to the pizza chalet and me and my brother rented um, wrestling VHS all the time. My mom was like, oh my goodness. But that was something special to me. It's why I love it. And I don't even want to open this, Rod, but I really appreciate it. No matter what it is, but I have a feeling knowing you, it's, oh my gosh, you've got to be kidding me. Check this out, y'all. Check that out. This is, that is so cool. This is actually one of the Holy Grails <laughs> to wrestling LJ and figures. Oh this gosh. is a 1985 16-inch Hulk Hogan, Titan. which comes with the actual shirt and, and actual belt. belt on it. So this could be the staple of your wrestling figure collection, but you pair that next to this. How sexy oh, does that my look? Gosh, I mean, that looks. We're gonna get that graded and put, and put that, that in next there. To... I'm gonna thank you every time I do that, dude. Thank you. I pray you're getting a little emotional here. That is insane. I really appreciate it. So I'm gonna give you something almost <laughs> as collectible, but this is we talk about rare, rare editions, right? So I've sold thousands of these right here. Absolutely thousands of these. This is lovingly called the house that Enaman built because it gets your eBay store moving. But this one, if you look at it, talk about a rare version. You see how one eyeball is upside down? So this one right here is headed to, and Sean, I gotta give you a thank you. Sean bought this years ago as a charity auction and he sent it back to me. And so this is headed to you and we're gonna give you a comment. <laughs> well, thank you, man. You don't have to do that, but thank All you. Right, man. Thank you so much for doing this video. Awesome. Thank y'all and I can't wait to see you next time.